we are going to do the prep work for a multi-color three drawer chest sides. And there's a few parts to the sides. There's the side frame, which consists of the styles, which are the vertical pieces, and the rails, which are the horizontal pieces that go like so. And then the other part to the side are the panels. So for the multicolor, we have to determine what are we going to stain and what are we going to leave gray. So we've got four panels per section or four boards per panel. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do two grays and red. This will be stained red and this will be stained brown. The reason why we need to know this now is because with the gray wood, we're going to only flap sand it at the 150 grit and not the 100 because the 100 is more aggressive and it's going to take away too much of the gray color. But I'm giving you kind of an overview of the sides entirely. We're going to focus first on the side frame. So I'm going to do all of my 100 grit flap sanding with my side frame parts to start. So here we go. So one thing that I didn't mention, um, the side frame styles, this is a style, it has a little uh, block at the bottom of it. The block is on the inside of the style. So just to clarify, you're gonna sand the opposite side to the block side. And that's what I did. So now we're gonna move over to the 150 grit and I'm going to bevel my rails. I'm gonna put a bevel here and a bevel there with the grain. And then I'm gonna put one bevel on one end, the end that butts into the, the style. Side frame is uh, flap, flap sanded and beveled. Now we're going to move on to the panels. So as I mentioned earlier, I want to determine what's gray and what's going to get stained. And I know I have four panels or four boards per panel. So I'm just laying them out and I can see that the cut man, he's got two that are completely gray. So those I'm just gonna flap sand with 150 grit. And these other two here, I'm gonna flap sand with the 100 grit. We're gonna bevel all the boards with the grain um, on both ends. And then here's my other set. So I'm gonna put my gray panels in a pile and my to be stained uh, boards in a pile as well. So we'll go ahead and flap sand the stained boards first with the 100 grit. Okay, so that's it for the flap sanding. Next, we're gonna go uh, to the assembly bench and we're gonna put together our side frames. I'm gonna lay out our side frames so we, we know how we're gonna put this together. Basically, the, the top rail butts in flush with the top of the side frame uh, style. And then the lower rail will start where the block stops, like so. And then, the other one will be the same way, but it'll be the opposite. You got to make sure you do a left and a right. So the next step is to go ahead and pocket cut two pocket cuts in uh, one end of each of the four rails. 
One thing I failed to mention, I beveled one end of uh, these rails in the back room. That's the end that I want to be pocket cutting out here. Okay, so now we're ready to put them together. So I'm gonna flip them upside down, lay them both out, and I'm gonna lay them out opposite each other so I don't accidentally make two of the same side. And I'm gonna use a one and a quarter screw to attach the rails to the style. And just like the face frame, we're gonna make sure we're flush. That's what we want. Looks good, it's flush with the, the uh, rail is flush with the style. And it's at the proper height. I'm going to go ahead and do the upper rail and I'm holding my uh, index finger flush to hold that top rail and that style flush with each other. Now we'll go ahead and attach the, uh, the opposite side, same thing. So those are our side frames. The next step is to sand them. They've been flap sanded with the 100 grit. We're gonna orbital sand them with the 150. So now I'm gonna take a piece of sandpaper and I'm just gonna hit the inside edges of the side frame just to make sure that there's not, they're not rough anywhere. Now these guys are ready for stain. And I've got two piles. We're gonna do two red, which are a red chestnut, and two brown, which are early American. And if you remember, we discussed before, we've got also two gray panel or two gray boards per panel that'll fit between these two. So I'm gonna go ahead and stain the red chestnut first. I always wanna stir up your stain. And I've got a staining sponge in the bottom of my container that I'm gonna Get out of there. I'm gonna squeeze out a lot of the excess stain that's on my sponge. And then we're gonna go ahead and apply it over the face and the two edges of the board. I'm gonna take a rag and I'm gonna wipe off the excess. Okay, so those are finished. Now we're gonna switch over to the early American. So we'll mix up the stain. Same process, we're putting uh, the early American, the brown color on two of the boards. Sometimes it is hard to tell the difference between the red and the brown, but when you put it up against the gray, it's, it's a little easier to tell side by side. Sometimes it's not as clear. And we're just doing like we can see the face and the two edges. I'm gonna go ahead and hit everything before I go back and wipe it down. And like we did with the face frame, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the entire I'm gonna hit the inside as well. Everything but the very bottom. Anything that touches the floor, I don't wanna be staining. You wanna squeeze out uh, your stain to get in those little cracks there. We don't want any, any light wood showing. Looks as though I've gotten everything, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a rag and wipe off the excess stain. Well, I found that I missed a spot. I missed the back edge, so I'm gonna to have to go back and get that. Then I'll just take a quick look at them and make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm back at the assembly bench and I laid out my side panels the way I want them to be. So that way I'll know how we're going to go ahead and uh, pocket screw them. I'm going to go ahead and do three pocket screws per board. Three out of the four boards needed. This last board we won't pocket screw because I'm just pocket screwing into it. And I'm going to come in about four inches from each end and then I'll also do one approximately in the center. Okay, so we're finished with pocket screws. Now we're gonna go ahead and put it together just as it's laid out. And I'll match them up pretty close to flush. I'll have to get a tape to confirm, but this may or may not be any longer than it needs to be. So I wanna flush them up pretty close. I hold my thumb down to keep my boards matched up. I'm 
gonna flip it over just to make sure that first set is okay. And it looks good. No screws pop through and we're nice and flush. That board was a little off, so I, I, you know, as you can see, I put my hand under it to feel where the boards were flush and I moved them as I needed to. So everything looks good. This one is good. Do the second panel. Okay, panels are together. Take a look at this other one. Make sure it's good. It looks good. Okay, so now I need to go to the work order and confirm the actual finish size of my side panel because I believe I should be a little big and we, we're gonna need to cut it down. So here's my side panel and I'm gonna take a measurement just to confirm. Right now, from one end of the rail to the back of the style is 18 and a half. According to the work order, we need to be 18 and a quarter because we're gonna flush up with the front of the rail when we attach the panel to the frame but we want to leave a quarter inch for that backing to fit in behind. And this style hides that backing edge is what it does. So I'm also going to check the height. It looks like 29 inches will work just fine. And we are 31. So I can go ahead and cut uh, two inches off of my length. And I happen to be 19, so we need to cut off three quarters of our width. So we're gonna go over to the table saw to, to do that. I'm gonna rip the excess off of the brown board on both of them, so I, I treat them the same way. So I'm setting the fence to 18 and a quarter. And I'll go ahead and rip these. Okay, so now we need to cut to length. And I need to really square up one end because my ends aren't perfectly square. So I'm gonna go over to the panel saw to square up one end. Best to put the finish side against the panel frame when you use the panel saw. And I'm gonna reference this little mark on the plate of the, uh, where the saw is. It tells me where that saw blade's gonna cut. So I know I have two extra inches. So I'm gonna eyeball about it cutting off of an inch. Make sure you clean up your uh, your waste cuts because they can interfere with the next person using the saw. So you may have noticed I struggled to make that cut. It was because my the guard for the saw blade hit the very end of the board. If you're just in a certain place, it can get stuck. So you kind of either you need to either you need to cut a little more out to get that to work for you. So now we're back to the table saw and we're going to cut this these two to 29 inches tall. We are going to attach our panels to the back of the side frame. And what we want to do, we want to be really close to flush with the top, but we want to be right at flush with the end of the rail on both the top and the bottom rail. So I'm in a pretty good spot. And then I'm going to attach this with one and a quarter square drive screws and I'm gonna put, uh, say, four screws along the style, and then I'm gonna put two screws in each rail. One thing I wanna do first, though, well, I'm gonna go ahead and put a screw in, but then I'm gonna square up this top edge to make sure that this is square, because if it's not, then that side, when it mounts to the uh, top, won't sit quite, quite right. So I'm using one and a quarter screws to attach this, and I'm gonna Put one about three inches from the top of the style. And hold that in place. Then I'm gonna get my square. And usually, in many cases, it is pretty it is pretty good. I just wanna make sure I'm not way off here. And we are real close here. I gotta, once again, I gotta make sure I'm staying flush with the ends of my rails that my panel is. I'm gonna go ahead and put another screw in the style. And then two more in the middle. And then I'm gonna put one in the top here. I'm gonna get one started. And I know I need to push down on that rail just a little bit. I'm gonna reposition this whole thing. And then I'm gonna double check it, it looks good. So I'll put a second screw in the center of this top rail. 
Got to remember you only have two inches width to work with there. Rotate my side around. Go ahead and put the screw near the end and one in the center. Oftentimes when you're driving these screws, it'll pick the, the piece you're trying to screw into. So I'll always just back it out and kind of create an additional pilot and then sink it. And then that's what happened there and that one worked well. So here it is, there's our panel. There's our side panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same with the other one. So what I did on this guy, I put the gray board towards the end of the rails. So I'll do the same with the other side. And I'm flushing up with the ends of the rails. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach my panel to the style. Now we're gonna go ahead and check it for square and it looks good. So I don't need to make any adjustments. There's our second panel. So there's two more steps and then we're finished. This panel is really close to flush, but it's not 100% flush. So I'm gonna take these over to the edge sander and just bump the ends on the edge sander and make sure the rails and the panels are both flush to each other. going to take my sandpaper and I'm just going to put a little bevel on this rail now that we've just sanded it and just a little bevel here as well one more thing to do we are going to pocket screw three to four pocket cuts on the inside because that's how we're going to attach the side to the face frame. It's actually the next step, but it, it preps for the builder for assembly. So I'm going to come down about an inch or so inside the rail and an inch or so up from this rail. And then I'm going to put two more pockets in the center of the field. If I ever see a knot in my way, I'm always going to try to avoid it. It's just going to be problems if I try to pocket cut into that and it's gonna blow out. So there it is. There's our pocket cuts, and that's what we're gonna to use to attach the side to the face frame for the next step. Now we're finished with the sides. They are complete.